are so excited that you've joined us today as we learn about the Word of God. We're going to start with worship, so hop up to your feet and join us. Come on, lift up your hands. The Bible says lift up holy hands towards the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender all to you, my God. I will give you all I have. For you took my filthiness and made me clean. Sing this out. And I love you. you love him. Just say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, he is as close as the mention of his name. And he hears you when you talk to him. He hears you when you whisper to him. So right now, just begin. You can even whisper talk. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sing this out to him. Sing nothing compares. Nothing compares. That's good. Come on, he hears you. Sing it a little bit louder. Nothing compares. That's so good. Even louder. Come on. You can do it. Sing it out. it. Open up your mouth. Let your praise out. Let's sing it together. Nothing compares. None compares to you, Jesus. Nothing compares. Here we go. Sing it out. Nothing compares. None compares to you, oh God. Sing it one more time. Nothing compares. One last time. And nothing compares. Sing this out. And I love.
on your thinking caps and get ready for everyone's favorite game, Weigh It Out. The game where you decide which item weighs more. Everybody stand up. To indicate which side you think weighs more, simply shout winner when your side is highlighted. If you win, you advance, but be careful. If you lose, you sit down. Here we go. Weigh it out. First up, which weighs more, an African elephant or a Volkswagen Beetle? The winner is African elephant, 13,000 pounds, a Volkswagen, 3,000 pounds. Round two, a chicken or a full bottle of ketchup? Weigh it out. Chicken, three pounds. Ketchup, 2.5 pounds. Let's try another one. School bus or a football team? The winner is school bus, 28,000 pounds. Football team, 24,000 pounds. Remember, if you choose the winner, stay standing. If you don't choose correctly, sit down. Round four, which weighs more, a big screen TV or a microwave? This one is tough. The answer is big screen TV, 65 pounds, microwave, 45 pounds. Next up, pick the heavier item, a pumpkin or a watermelon. Weigh it out. This one is close. The answer is Watermelon, 20 pounds. Pumpkin, 8 pounds. Round six, which item is heavier? A tarantula or a mouse? The winner is a tarantula. <laughs> Three ounces, mouse, one ounce. Last round, weigh it out. A blue whale or a commercial airline? No question, a blue whale, 200,000 pounds. Airplane, 90,000 pounds. If you are still standing, you are a champion. If you're sitting, you're a lightweight. Thanks for playing Way It Out! Hi everyone! I'm Miss Jordan and I'm here to lead us in today's memory verse, which comes from the Book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. You can follow me the first time. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Awesome, let's put it to music so it'll help us remember. On the count of three, let's lay that track. One, two, three, lay that track. I 
I'm a little kid beat. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 16. 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 Great job everybody. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi friends, I'm Miss Melanie. We're so excited to learn about the Word of God together. Today's story is about when God asked Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. We're going to watch the story and then we'll come back to talk about it. Stories of the Bible, Moses and the Burning Bush. This is Moses. Hello. Moses was an Israelite boy born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? The Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians. But God had a special plan for Moses. Oh, eh? And he spent his childhood in the palace of the Pharaoh. You see, when Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh oh Pharaoh found out what Moses had done, and he tried to have Moses killed. So Moses ran away from Egypt. He stopped in the land of Midian. Uh. And seven sisters came to the well to give water to their father's flock. Some shepherds came to drive them away. Hey, you. But Moses stood up for the women. Hey. Hey, now these sisters were the daughters of the Midianite priest named Jethro. When Jethro heard what Moses did for his daughters, he sent for Moses. So Moses came to live among the Midianites, and he married Zipporah, one of Jethro's daughters. Huh? Meanwhile, back in Egypt, the old pharaoh died, but he was replaced by a new pharaoh who continued to treat the Israelites poorly. Oh, man. The Israelites cried out to God because of the terrible things that the Pharaoh made them do. God heard these people and knew it was time to act. One day, Moses was tending Jethro's flock when an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses through a burning bush that would not burn up. Oh. Moses stopped to look at the bush and he heard the voice of God say, Moses, Moses. Hello? God then told Moses how sad he was because of the suffering of his people. He told Moses, that he wanted to do something about it, and he wanted Moses to be the one to do it. Oh, man. But Moses did not think he was the right person to go. God said, I will be with you. Uh, right. But Moses said that he wouldn't know the right thing to say to the people. So God said to tell the people that God himself had sent him and promised Moses that his plan would be fulfilled through Moses. But Moses still said to God that he did not think the people would believe him. So God said, what is that in your head? Oh. Moses said, a staff. God told Moses to throw it on the ground. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Then God told Moses to catch it. God showed Moses another sign huh? and told him to show these signs to the people if they did not believe what he said. 
Moses still didn't think he would have the right words to say. But God said that he himself was the one who made a man's mouth and gave him the ability to speak, so there was no need to worry. Yet even after all this, Moses said, God, please send someone else. Then God got mad at Moses oops, and said that he would send Moses' brother Aaron to speak for Moses. So Moses went back to his father-in-law and told him that he needed to go back to Egypt. Moses and his family started their journey back to Egypt. And Moses carried the staff of God in his hand, for this staff would be the tool God would use to demonstrate his awesome power to the Israelites and to the Egyptians. What an amazing true story found in the book of Exodus chapters 3 and 4. Let's study the Bible together. When we study the Bible together, we look at three parts. We look at observation, interpretation, and application. What is observation? Observation is what we see happening in this story. What is interpretation? Interpretation is what the story means. And what is application? Application is how we can apply what we learn to the stories to our lives. In the story, we observe how Moses grew up in Egypt. Moses saw how bad the Israelites were being treated and he didn't like it. Moses made a big mistake and he killed an Egyptian. And because of that, Moses had to escape Egypt and live with the Midianites. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. The burning bush was special because it did not burn out. God told Moses that he heard the cry of his people and that he was going to free them from slavery. God had told Moses that he had chosen him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. But Moses had told God that he wasn't the right person for the job. He told him that he wouldn't know what to say and he was convinced that the Israelites wouldn't believe him. But God had gave signs to Moses for the Israelites. He turned his staff into a snake and he cleared his hand from leprosy. God had told him that he didn't need to be afraid, that he would be with him. But still, Moses didn't feel that he was the person for the job. Instead, God decided that his brother Aaron would be the one speaking. So Moses and his family went to Egypt to do the work God had asked them to do. For interpretation, we see that even though Moses had to escape Egypt, God didn't forget about him. Moses made a big mistake, but still God used him to carry out his plan. Like Moses, we can make mistakes too, but we can be sure that God will never give up on us. Moses didn't want to go to talk to the Pharaoh. He had his doubts but God promised him that he would be with him. Moses also didn't want to talk to the Israelites. He wasn't sure that he was gonna have the words to say, but God reminded him that he is the one who makes the mouth of man and he is the one that will make them speak. When we feel like we don't have the words to say, God will give us the words at the right time. There's going to be a time where we make mistakes and we are gonna think that God is upset with us. But like Moses, he made a mistake, but God still wanted to be his friend. Our God is quick to forgive and slow to become angry. Like Moses, we can think that we are not ready to talk about God in front of others. But remember that God can give us the words to say. If you ever get afraid to do something that God asked you to do, remember that God will be with you just like he was with Moses. Can you repeat? I will not be afraid because God is with me wherever I go. Thanks again for learning the word of God with me. I can't wait till we learn next time. See you soon, friends.
Hi friends, we have been talking all about how God did something incredible, something impossible. And today we're going to do a fun activity showing about the impossible things that God can do. So for this craft, what we're going to do is we're going to make a cup that always lands the same way. It always lands upside down. Imagine when you throw a cup up, it might land sideways, it might land face forward. It can land in lots of ways, but we're going to do something that seems impossible, and that is to always make it fall the exact same way. This is a fun activity, but it has some trickiness because we're going to use some science in order to make it work. But God truly does things that are actually impossible. So for this craft, what you will need is a paper cup, a small little paper cup, You'll need a piece of paper and we'll talk about what that paper is going to be used for. And we will need a paper clip. You also will need scissors in order to cut it out. So this is our goal. This is what we're creating. We're creating a helicopter cup that no matter how far you throw it, when you drop it from over your head, it will always land in the exact same direction. So. We've included in the bottom of the description in this video, a template for you to use in order to print out this so that it'll be perfect and easy. But if you don't have access to a printer, that's okay. You can use a ruler in order to create this. So the first thing that you need, if you're not using the template, is that you'll need a piece of paper. It's the same size as a note card and it's three inches by five inches. So once you have this paper, what we're going to do is cut out a T shape so that we can create our helicopter propellers. So I've already cut it out and this is what you'll have. So you see, we have a T shape here and we have a big square block at the top. Now, the next thing, once we have our T-shape, is we're gonna cut it right down the center so that we can have a propeller going in both directions. So I'm gonna just make a little cut. If you don't use scissors, you can ask an adult to help you. So I cut this at the top here, and then I'm gonna fold it. So I'm gonna fold the first side down in the forward direction and I'm gonna fold the second side down in the backwards direction so that one side is going this way and the other side is going this way in order to create our propellers. Now, the next thing that you're gonna do is put this aside and grab your cup. In the top of your cup, what you'll need to do is use your scissors and very carefully just make a little slit across the cup. You can ask an adult to help you do this because you don't want to poke yourself. So I have my slit already cut. Maybe you can see it a little bit. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take my newly made propellers and I'm going to stick it right in my cup. All right, now that I have my propellers in my cup, I'm gonna make sure that they're standing up in the right way. The last thing I need is to add my paper clip. My paper clip is gonna make sure, one, that my propeller doesn't come out of the cup, and two, it's gonna add a little bit of weight, which is one of the reasons this will always land in the same direction. So you do need to use a paper clip so that your, your cup will always do that special fun trick and you can show it off. Now we're finished. Now I wanna encourage you guys to write on the top here, you can write, God does the impossible so that you can remember always that God does incredible, impossible things. I hope you had so much fun creating your flying saucer helicopter and that you share the good news that God does the impossible. Thank you so much for joining us, friends. We hope you had fun. If you'd like to see more from CT Kids, Click the link in the description down below. We hope to see you next time. Bye.